Holmes, will you stop that? You are utterly mad. Stop, Holmes! Is that you, Watson? Yes, of course it is. And you almost killed me. Nonsense. I was aiming for the vases. Blindfolded? Watson, quiet, please. I'm trying to concentrate. Ah, Lestrade. What is it this time? He can see me. Well, here it is, and it's a good one, Mr. Holmes. A gentleman by the name of Peter Carey, also known as Black Peter, has been murdered. A sailor, most probably. What happened here? Oh, Mr. Holmes, how could you? It's the only exercise I've had all week. A grateful client from Limoges sent me a vase collection this morning. I couldn't think of a better use for it. You're out of your mind. I missed four out of ten. Given you were blindfolded, that was very good. Can I have a try? Am I the only sane one here? I suppose that Watson is right, Inspector. A little brain work would be preferable now. Do please tell us more about Black Peter. Peter Carey, born in 1845 and 50 years old. An ambitious sort, he achieved much success in seal and whale hunting around Scandinavia retired in 1884 with a small fortune. He invested his money in a property called Woodman's Lee, near Forest Row in Sussex. It was where he lived for six years and where he was found dead yesterday. Has the investigation already begun? Yes and no. In fact, this crime is so mysterious that I would prefer you to join me down there. Give me half an hour to prepare, Inspector. Take your time and join me there. I have to go through the yard first. The many men struck again. What have they done this time? They robbed a powder reserve. I'll meet you at Woodman's Lee, Mr. Holmes. I should help Mrs. Hudson here. I also have several appointments that I must keep this afternoon. I shall go alone then.
Mr. Holmes, I'm over here. Come on. These footprints appear to be quite large. It seems that the garden was well maintained. Inspector Lestrade, when will you remove my husband's body? It's sacrilegious to leave him here like this. As soon as we can, Mrs. Carey, I assure you. Allow me to introduce you to Mr. Sherlock Holmes. He's a detective. No doubt you've heard of him. I'll wait for you in front of the cabin, Mr. Holmes. My condolences, Mrs. Carey. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Madam, can you tell me if you saw or heard anything unusual upon the night of the murder? At two o'clock in the morning, I heard a terrible scream. But I thought nothing of it then. He would scream all the time when he was drunk. Can you please tell me what occurred on the evening of the murder? Well, Peter got drunk in the evening. He was in such a terrible temper. Usually, whenever that happened, he'd stay all night drinking in his cabin before passing out. Do you remember at what time you found your husband's body? In the morning, at around seven o'clock. I noticed the cabin door was open, but I didn't go in to take a look, for I knew my husband would not have liked it. At around ten o'clock, I dared to glance in through the door and... Oh dear... Was your husband accustomed to receiving visitors? Oh, no, I don't think so. I mean, he didn't really have many friends. We lived quite an isolated life here, after his retirement. The garden is very large and well-maintained. Do you employ someone to look after it? It is true, there is a lot of work, but my husband took care of it himself. You have indeed suffered a great loss, Mrs. Carey. Nevertheless, I believe it will be less of a burden for you soon. Yes. Life with Peter was never easy. 
But he was still my husband. He was different, wasn't he, when you first met him upon your return from Plymouth? Yes, Mr. Holmes. Oh, my goodness, but how do you know about that? You undertook a pilgrimage to the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela when you were young. That much is evident from the rosary in your hand. The shortest route for the pilgrim from England to Spain is from Plymouth. I believe that you met Peter Carey as a young sailor there, and you married him soon afterwards. That is indeed what happened, Mr. Holmes. How extraordinary. Thank you, madam. The door is locked. Wait just a moment, Mr. Holmes, and I'll open it. I locked it yesterday to ensure that no one should enter the cabin and tamper with the evidence. Ah, good thinking. Hello, hello, hello. What is it, Lestrade? It seems to me that someone has tried to force it, Mr. Holmes. Let me see. These scratches are fresh. You're right. Someone tried to force open the door. I swear these scratches were not here yesterday. Now a mysterious visitor came here last night. Well, he's not the man for the job. This lock is not a difficult one. Perhaps he did not have the right tool. What a terrible way to die. Rum, a sailor's drink. Someone drank from this glass recently. It seems that Captain Carey was enjoying a drink before he met his death. The initials P.C. have been crudely burned. A sailor's work. Hmm. This aroma is familiar, but to recognize it, I must construct my associations in one picture.
Yes. This is a coarse tobacco, quite strong and very popular among sailors. The tooth of a sperm whale, probably from one of Peter Carey's catches. This place is not covered with dust, like the rest of the shelf. An object was taken from here. It was larger than a book, a box or a small chest, perhaps. Hmm. The ship's logs of the Sea Unicorn for the years 1878 to 1884. Peter Carey was her captain. Harpoons for hunting whales. Peter Carey's boots. They look to be a size eight. Old navigation instruments, nothing interesting. The Sea Unicorn. She was the ship that Peter Carey commanded. The pattern of the blood stain indicates that the notebook was not lying on the floor prior to the crime, but it was dropped into the pool of blood after the death of Peter Carey. J.H.N are probably the initials of the owner of this notebook. These abbreviations mean something, but what? This wooden handle is plain and solid. This blood is from the pool underneath the dead body. Peter Carey tried to defend himself with this knife, but he did not succeed. Peter Carey was fully dressed. He was not caught by surprise. It is possible that he knew his murderer. The weapon fully penetrated the body. The force of the blow was immense. Peter Carey was impaled to the wall by a whaling harpoon. This man is in his fifties, yet he still looks quite strong.
Is this your husband's tobacco pouch? I'm not sure. It might be. But he hadn't smoked in a very long time. Your husband's private papers. Do you know where they are? There was a small tin box, barely larger than a book. He kept his papers there. It should be somewhere in his cabin. Thank you, madam. These boots don't match the footprints. Huh. Someone was here yesterday. They attempted to force the door to gain entry. Well, Mr. Holmes, what do you think? I think that we are lucky. And why is that? Because of last night's attempted break-in. Oof. You've lost me. It is very probable that whoever came here hoped to find the door open. They tried to force it with a knife blade, but they failed. What will they do? Why, return tonight, when they will be better prepared. Aha! So what do you propose? We shall remain on the outside, near the window, where we stand the best chance of catching sight of our visitor. Well, gentlemen, ready your pistols. We have a long night ahead of us. This looks like the perfect hiding place. Did you hear that? There's someone there. I'm gonna collar him. I'll be right behind you. Police! Hold it right there! Mr. Holmes. All right, my fine fellow. Who are you and what are you doing here? You're detectives, I suppose. You imagine that I'm connected with the death of Captain Carey. I assure you I'm innocent. Innocence? And what are you doing in his cabin? Shall I tell you? You came to retrieve what you had lost after killing Peter Carey. But we were here waiting for you. What is your name? John Hopley Nelligan, but I... I didn't... 
Do you deny that you came here yesterday? No, but... but I... yes, it, it's just that I couldn't... I'm tired of this. Off we go to the yard. Tomorrow, I'll see that you're put in front of the judge. What? But you can't! I'm not... it's a terrible mistake! Enough! You can explain all of that to the judge. You're coming with me to the yard. But... In light of recent events, it seems evident that your coming here was unnecessary. All the same, I'm very grateful to you, Mr. Holmes. You are welcome, Inspector. But please don't be too hard on our young fellow. I would like to question him tomorrow morning. Good morning, Mr. Holmes. Can I help you? Good morning, Constable. I would like to speak to the fellow who was arrested at Woodman's Lee last night. Ah, the young man. He's waiting in the interrogation room. You can go straight through. His belongings are held in the evidence room. Thank you. These are the suspect's belongings. A pocket knife. It was used to force the door of Peter Carey's cabin. A handkerchief with the initials J.H.N. From R. Dawson. To my friend and partner, 1883. Dawson. I've seen this name before. Perhaps my archive holds the answer. The notebook that we found on Peter Carey's cabin floor. Does this notebook belong to you? Yes. But where did you find it? 
I did not know... I, I, I thought I'd lost it at the hotel. What do these abbreviations mean? Oh, no. I beg you, I can't. If I told you, it would only make things worse. But I will find out eventually, Mr. Nelligan. The sea knife was found near Carrie's body. Tell me, Mr. Nelligan, did Mr. Carrie try to defend himself or to attack you with it? I don't know. I didn't kill anyone. The police seized this valuable ring from you. Whose is it? I didn't steal it from anyone. It has always belonged to me. The ring's date of engraving is many years ago. You would have been a child then, hardly in any position to receive such an item from a partner. So, Mr. Nelligan, who is the true owner of the ring? The ring is mine. No, Mr. Nelligan. I believe that the ring had belonged to your father. Oh, but, but, but how do you know? The jacket you are wearing is made of an expensive fabric that only a man of exceptional wealth could afford. You do not seem to me to be a rich man, Mr. Nelligan. Furthermore, the garment is ill-fitting. It is quite clear that it belonged to someone else, most probably your father. With your father gone and taking with him the family's wealth, as a little boy you had to find yourself a manual job, and it was most probably cleaning fish. You cut your hands often while working. I can tell from the scars. I'm speechless, Mr. Holmes. It, it all happened exactly as you say. Well, I will see you soon, young man. Please, let me go. I'm innocent. I need to stage a reconstruction. I am sure that Watson would be happy to oblige. <laughs> 